Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. My name is Dr. Asia Kubuzala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today and also their opinions on such issues. Again, NNPCL raises petrol pump price. NLC demands immediate reversal of petrol price hike. Dangote Refinery will show Nigeria's true petrol consumption, says Dangote. 12 migrants die trying to cross Channel to UK. Now, top on what's trending, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, has increased the pump price of petrol from 568 Naira to 879 Naira per litre amid lingering false scarcity and crisis in the country. Reports on the newly increased price comes after NNPCL said it owed its suppliers more than $6 billion in debt. While the reports from Abuja said the price was jerked up to 897 Naira per litre in Lagos, NNPCL station at Awolowo Road increased the price to 855 Naira per litre. Other marketers have since jerked up prices too, following NNPCL's price adjustment, with over 30% increments reported to around 897 Naira per litre. Now, responding to that, a netizen said, I remember Peter will be saying if we don't get it right in 2023, it won't take time for some of us who would be here to become refugees in our own country. Sadly, a lot of people are already turning to refugees here. Another said, all because of Dangote refinery, we shouldn't be enemies of ourselves. Someone predicted, we will still buy it regardless, suffer just this start. Food stuff will skyrocket in a minute. And the federal government has denied a report that the Ministry of Petroleum Resources had ordered the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to sell fuel at 1,000 naira per litre. In a statement signed by the Special Advisor, Media and Communication to the Minister for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lopobiri Nemaka Okafo on Tuesday, the federal government declared that the report was concocted and ill-conceived to sow discord and confusion in the oil industry. The report claimed that Lopobiri gave the NNPCL the directive. However, the minister stressed that the federal government had never interfered with petroleum pricing with NNPCL. The statement read, The federal government is compelled to address the outright falsehoods currently being circulated on social media, which claim that the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Senator Heineken Lopobri, has directed the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to inflate petroleum prices above the approved pump price. Now someone asked, why is it so difficult to sack this NNPCL chairman? Another said, them increase them, abide them no increase them. Simple question. Another person wrote, to work as Minister of Petroleum in Nigeria, you must know how to lie. Subsidy is gone since last year, May, yet NNPCL is owing foreign suppliers $6 billion. How? Owner of Lagos-based refinery Ali Kudangote says his $20 billion facility will show the true daily petrol consumption in Nigeria. At a conference in Lagos to roll out premium model Spirit, PMS, also known as Petro, at his refinery on Tuesday, the billionaire business tycoon said, There's a lot of round tripping where people now do documentation and the fuel does not come into Nigeria and this is a fact. Right now, as we have this refinery working, it will show the true consumption of Nigeria. We can track every single loaded truck and we will try as much as possible to track the loaded ships. The refinery owner said as soon as his company finalizes modalities with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NNPCL, the product will hit the market. While speaking on pricing for petrol produced at his 650,000 barrels per day facility, the refinery owner said it is an arrangement which is designed and approved by the Federal Executive Council led by the Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now responding, someone said, refinery never begin full production. NNPC don't increase pump price. What's now the assurance it will be cheaper? Another said, I really don't understand why the president is still keeping Melikari. Another wrote, Ali Kudangote's $20 billion refinery could indeed provide a clearer picture of Nigeria's true daily petrol consumption. By tracking every loaded truck and ship, the refinery aims to address issues like round tripping, where fuel is documented but not delivered to Nigeria. This transparency could help curb corruption and inefficiencies in the fuel supply chain. Once the refinery is fully operational and the modalities with NNPC are finalized, 
It will likely offer more accurate data on consumption patterns and potentially improve the overall fuel distribution system in Nigeria. Now, the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, on Tuesday demanded an immediate reversal of the hike in fuel price announced by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, saying the hike has worsened the misery of Nigerians. Amid the lingering fuel scarcity in the country, the NNPCL increased the pump price of petrol from 568 naira to 855 naira and 897 naira, depending on the location per liter. Condemning the move in a statement, NLC President Joe Ajero accused the federal government of betraying the labor movement. Ajero said, We demand the immediate reversal of the latest increments in the pump of PMS across the country, the release of all those incarcerated or being prosecuted on the assumption of having participated in the recent protests. Halt the indiscriminate arrest and detention of citizens on trumped up charges. Reversal of the 250% tariff hike in electricity. Stop the hijack of the duties of the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Now someone alleged, NLC has nothing to offer Nigerians. We've never had NLC so weak, self-centered and disenfranchised from the people. All he knows is minimum wage and their pockets. Another said, see this NLC is even the major cause of the masses problem. Another person wrote, you people don't fight to the finish. It's unfortunate the misery Nigerians are facing. If only the NLC can for once not betray the trust of Nigerians and fight in the interest of all. Now next on what's trending, politician and a former presidential candidate for the Labour Party, Peter Obi has urged Nigerians to demand transparency from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, over the true state of petrol subsidy payments. Obi urged in a series of tweets on his official X handle on Tuesday, saying that the NNPCL has so far presented conflicting reports to Nigerians on subsidy. Nigerians must stop at nothing in demanding for transparency in the operations of governments, especially critical agencies like the state-owned NNPCL whose activities appear to be shrouded in secrecy. The conflicting reports on subsidy payments have left Nigerians in the dark unsure of what is happening in this all-important company. It is very curious that the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, which declared a 3 trillion naira profit in 2023, is coming up with a bizarre claim of financial constraints in supply and fuel, he said. Now someone said, Aren't you a Nigerian? Demand now. Another said, The only person I want to support at this stage as president is either my father, my brother, or myself. Another said, I like the way Obi puts it. Nigerians will make the demand themselves. Now let's go on a quick break, and when we return, the program continues. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. Now, the three leading opposition figures in Nigeria are discussing the possibility of a merger to salvage Nigerians from hunger and widespread insecurity ahead of the 2027 presidential election, a spokesman for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, said on Monday. PDP Deputy National Spokesman Ibrahim Abdullah stated this to newsmen on Monday. He said the three opposition candidates in the last election, PDP's Atikwa Abubakar, Labour Party's Peter Ubi and Rabi Ukonkwaso of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, would put personal interests aside and form a formidable alliance to defeat the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, come 2027. Abdullah said that, had his party's past leadership managed conflict well, high-ranking chieftains like former River State Governor Yesum Wike, Kwankwaso and Obi would still be full-blooded members of the PDP and the party would have defeated Bola Tinubu of the APC in the last election. Now responding to that, a netizen said, Atiku would never step down for anyone while Obi will never want to disappoint obedience. Very interesting days ahead. God bless Nigeria. Another said, if it's easy to back a candidate, Obi for no leave, PDP. Another opined, all these merger plans would end in chaos and futility because Tinubu is a man chosen by Almighty God and not humans. Tinubu straight to 2031. I and my family, including my friends and associates, will still vote Tinubu come 2027. Any gang up against Tinubu shall fail in the mighty powers of Almighty God. Amen. 
Now, next on what's trending, the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare has expressed disappointment over the decision by the Nigeria Association of Resident Doctors to embark on a seven-day warning strike despite pleas by the federal government to resolve its concerns and ensure continued industrial harmony. In a statement by the ministry spokesman, Adu Bako, the federal government evoked the no-work, no-pay policy for the number of days the strike would be observed in line with the extant labor laws. He noted that the measure is not intended to undermine the legitimate concerns of medical professionals, but to ensure that essential health care services are not unduly disrupted to the detriment of the public. Resident doctors across Nigeria commenced a seven-day strike on Monday to demand the release of a Kaduna-based doctor, Ganiyat Popola, who has been in kidnappers' den for over eight months. On Thursday, Bako said, over the past month, the ministry, in collaboration with relevant security agencies, has been working to rescue popular and high-level discussions and coordinated efforts are currently on the way. Now, responding to that, a netizen said, now that we are in military regime, everyone has to be careful low. and bad governance protests, treason, warning strike, no job, no pay. Another said, it's the poor people that will suffer because most of these doctors have private clinics where they charge arms and legs. Another person wrote, and federal government is also stopping them from traveling abroad. Now you see Nigeria is against the health sector. Keep your license. Go find what to do. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has denounced claims that it is involved in the admission process for higher national diploma HND students. A statement signed by the spokesman of the board, Fabian Benjamin, said the board has no involvement, authority, or control over the admissions process for HND candidates. The statement added that JAM is also not responsible for other higher institutions programs besides their regular admissions, which doesn't require JAM. Later on, these students may want to transition to the regular program for their HND. However, they may face issues with NYSC because without a JAM registration number, they can't participate in NYSC. Another person said, The question on everyone's mind is, what prompted JAM's sudden regularization policy? For years, JAM has been integral to the NYSC mobilization process, particularly for polytechnic graduates. So what triggered this change? Who ultimately bears the consequences of this decision and who should be held accountable for these irregularities? Another person said, Omar, what is happening? Hope they won't denounce private university admissions very soon also. And now on the foreign scene, at least 12 migrants died off the northern French coast on Tuesday, trying to cross the channel to England in the deadliest search disaster this year, the French government said, as a major rescue operation was on the way. Announcing the death toll on ex-French Interior Minister Gerald Darmanin also said that two migrants were still missing. Several were wounded after their boat carrying dozens ran into trouble some five kilometers from the French coast. Damanin said he was traveling to the area of the disaster to meet with officials. All government services are mobilized to find the missing people and treat the injured, he said. Now responding, a lady said, this same UK, it's not worth it to suffer day everywhere. Another person said, but why now? Are you a criminal? You're already in Europe, in France, and you still went ahead to risk your life. Why, if not for language barrier, France is far better than UK in many ways? Another person said, not worth it. And now to a funny video of an instant karma. Take a look. <laughs> and that's it. You're up to date with trending stories across the world. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Until next time, goodbye.